Well, I'm glad to have you with us tonight. Um, I'm going to preach a, 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 a message tonight that is going to be very strong. Um, it's going to be a strong medicine. And this message is not to, uh, to discourage you, uh, but just to look at the reality of what God's Word says about uh, what believers, what confessing believers, who will not inherit eternal life. So there are confessing believers that are not going to make it. And uh, say, say, thank God I'm going to make it. Okay, so I just want to start a positive this way. But the reason why I'm doing this is the New Testament, and we could go into the Old Covenant too, but a lot of people would uh, just kind of um, overrule the Old Covenant. And so let's just stick with the New Covenant, and let's look at the Word of God and what it says about what a believer's life is supposed to be and those who will not inherit eternal life. Uh, the good news is as long as there's breath in our lungs, we can repent. We can repent. Now, that's one thing that isn't preached too much anymore. We just simply have people pray a prayer, say, Jesus, come on my heart, and there's no change in their lifestyle. Uh, and that's not Christianity. But first we got to determine, um, and, and I'm not sure how far we're going to get tonight, because there's actually many, many, many scriptures. And what I'd like to do, and it won't be done tonight, I'd like to take you to other translations and show you these scriptures that will give us a, a, a deeper uh, look at these realities. Because the King James, to most of us, when they use certain words, we don't really know what they're talking about. So we want to look at other versions of the, uh, of the New Testament that will help us. But first we've got to establish, do we agree that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works? So what I have run in through the years when I have tried to deal with these issues, uh, especially with those who... Uh, believe this doctrine that God loves me no matter what I do. Now, there's truth in that statement, but first of all, that statement's not in the Bible. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him. What does it mean to believe? Well, in the book of James, it, it says that uh, uh, faith without works is dead. There's got to be, the, it, for other words, if you really believe, if you really have faith, there's going to be corresponding reaction. Now, those works don't really save you, but those works are the evidence of your faith. When God told Abraham to offer up his son, he offered up his son. So we're going to look at this because there's many in our society today that have been deceived um, by uh, ministers. Now, why would ministers want to deceive us? Well, there's a number of reasons, but really uh, a lot of ministers are deceived and they're thinking they're right with God when they're not right with God. And the, the Bible is very explicit with who's right with God and who's not because Jesus said, by their fruits, you will know them. So let's first ask this question. Uh, everything that God has said in the Bible, did he really mean what he said? Uh, if he really meant what he said, is there evidence that he meant what he said? Well, thousands of examples. Uh, I'll just give you a couple. Let's begin at the very beginning. God told Adam and his wife, uh, do not eat from that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Uh, if you eat of that tree, you will die. Or the Hebrew says, die, you shall die. And the devil came along, contradicted God's word, and said, oh, you won't die. And you could base that upon the fact that God is love. He doesn't really mean what he says, but he does mean what he says. And when they ate of that fruit, they, they died. Their relationship with God died. Uh, the human heart died. The soul that sinneth it shall die. Uh, darkness set in. Uh, they reverted to a fleshly nature, a carnal nature, uh, Adam immediately offered up his wife to God because he thought God was going to punish him in that, that moment. And he said to God, Lord, it's the woman whom thou gavest me. So right away he is blaming the woman. He is blaming God because you gave her to me. It's not my fault. And see, this is what happens to the carnal nature. So we got to establish, does God really mean what he says? Yes, he does. For instance, God told Noah, I'm going to destroy the earth with a flood. Now, would a God of love destroy all of humanity and the animal world, the insect world, uh, the, the birds, 
except for those in the ark with the flood? Yes, he did. He said, this is what I'm going to do. And of course, if those people would have repented in that day and age, he would not have destroyed the earth, but they didn't do it. Uh, God told uh, Abraham the day would come when his descendants would end up in Egypt and they would be slaves for 400 years. Did that come to pass? Yes. Uh, God told Joseph uh, that Egypt and the world would have seven years of plenty, seven years of famine. Did that happen? Yes. God told Moses, you're going to go to Egypt and you're going to do mighty signs and wonders and I'm going to deliver my people of Israel. And did he do it? Yes. So we could spend all night long proving that everything that God ever said, he meant. Jesus said they were going to betray him. He was going to be offered up as a sacrifice. He was going to die, but on the third day he was going to rise again from the dead. Did it happen? Yes, it did happen. So let's establish the fact that God means exactly what he says. And we got to establish this. And there's many scriptures that says, he said, yeah, but I'm born again now and I'm washed in the blood and therefore the blood of Jesus covers me of all sin. No, it doesn't cover you from sin that you knowingly, purposely refuse to forsake. It doesn't forgive you of sin. For other words, if I got born again and I was a thief before I was born again, and I continued to be a thief, I continue to steal, I will not be forgiven unless I repent of it. Now, yes, the thief on the cross, he repented, and before he died, but that's kind of a scary proposition to wait to your last breath to say, Lord, forgive me, and to really be sincere. I believe if that thief could have came off of that cross that day, his day, his time, his life of thievery was over with. And, and, and for much, he wasn't going to go back to being a thief anymore. But only God really knows our hearts. So God means what he says, and he really, he, and he says what he means. And so we really need to really look at this. Now, um, see, a lot of people are confused with this question. Well, Pastor Mike, once you're born again, uh, you know, you're good to go no matter what. And, and, and that's a lie. Now, don't misunderstand me. You cannot be born again, again, and again, and again. I'm not saying that. But Jesus gave us a perfect example. He said, the sower went forth and he sowed the seed, right? He said, of course, some seed fell on the roadside and the birds came and they ate it up. And this was all a typology of the human heart. And then other seed fell on the shallow ground and it says, it received the seed, sprang up, there was life, but then because of the sun and the heat and it had no depth, it died and it was gone. And he said that's like many believers, they get born again, and I've seen this many times, where somebody will make a confession of Christ, they'll be in love with God for a very brief period, maybe a week, a month, Usually, I'm talking about this classification of people, a very short period. I mean, I've had them come in here and they were drug addicts, alcoholics, who knows what they were involved in. They were weeping, they were crying, they were on fire for God for a month, two months, three months, and boom, they're gone. Next thing you know, you see them, now especially the day with social media, you'll see them on Facebook cussing and swearing and they're worse than ever. So that was a person who was born again. Now, Here's the scary thing. They're still born again. And, 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 but they're not right with God. Their heart isn't right with God. And the Bible says, and I know there's a lot of people attacking works. We're not saved by works, but we're saved onto good works. For in other words, if I'm truly born again, I ought to have fruit in my life. Then there's another classification of believers, and like I said, I'm not sure how far we're going to get into this tonight, that the seed is sown in soil but it's not been weeded there's thistles and thorns you know as well as i do if you ever plant a garden if you're going to ever really have a good garden you got to get rid of the weeds that means all the other plants that are sucking the life out of that ground taking up the sun taking up the moisture taking up the minerals and if you don't for some reason weeds will flourish but tomato plants you know uh, watermelon, whatever you plant, uh, uh, green beans, they'll die. They, got, they, they can't share the ground. Good, good plants can't share the ground with bad plants. And so there's got to be a weeding in our life. The ones who do the weeding is us. Nobody can weed my garden. I've got to weed my own garden. But he says the cares of life, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. 
and, and that's the generation we're in right now, especially in America, is a lot of people have made a confession of Christianity. Uh, they know some of the Bible. They go to church once in a great while. But the things of this world has just swallowed them up, and there's lying, deceiving preachers out there telling them they're okay. Now, here's the problem. If you, if you think people, if you, if you make people think they're okay, living worldly, fleshly, carnal lives, they're never going to get right with God. I, I mean, if I saw my son, who, who may be four or five years old, he's headed towards a six-lane highway, and he, there's traffic out there, and I know I can't get to him in time. The only thing I can do is yell at him. I'm going to be screaming my, my head off. Don't, don't. Little Johnny, stop. Johnny, please. I, I'm hoping he hears my voice. Well, really, that's about what's happening in the church. The only thing I can do is scream my head off, to, saying to the body of Christ, don't go there. Don't live like that. Don't act like that. Don't do that. Because they who do such things will not inherit eternal life. Now, this is a part of the gospel. You've got to preach the whole truth. If I love my child, I'm not going to let them run out there into that six, eight lane highway and get run over by the trucks and, the, and, and, and say, oh God, why did they go out in the highway? Because you didn't yell at them. You didn't shout at them. You didn't get their attention. What do you think the preaching of the gospel is? That's what the preaching of the gospel is. So we, we've got to truly preach the whole truth and declare what the Word of God really says. So I, I take no pleasure and no joy in sharing the truth I'm going to share with you tonight. Um, so I, I'd like to um, begin with what? The words of Jesus. So if what Jesus said, we can't trust it, we can't depend upon it, then I must have just wrote my whole Bible, Right? If what Jesus said he didn't mean, and he didn't mean what he said, he said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And here's the thing, if somebody won't listen to the Bible, you can pray for them, but, but if we don't agree that every scripture is of God, yeah, but Pastor Mike, they showed me a scripture that said that, that nobody will be able to snatch anybody out of the hand of, of, of Jesus. That's right. Nobody can snatch you out. Well, the Bible says, nothing shall separate me from the love of God, principalities, powers, uh, present things come. Uh, you know, that's right. Nothing can. For in other words, God is more than able to keep you, but there's one mention that is not in there. You can walk away from God. We never lose the power of choice. I, I know from personal experience, guys, I used to preach with, Woo, they were mightily used of God. They were on power. They were powerful for Jesus. And they, I saw them for whatever reason, whatever temptation, whatever disappointment, I saw them walk away from God. Now, I actually knew a young man who got born again. He was a highline worker, and he was uh, uh, in a terrible accident, and he broke his back. And he was all crippled up, but he could still get around some, full of pain. And one day he walked into a bar. Now, in this bar up in Huntington County, in this bar, there was a backslidden preacher. The preacher is at the bar, and this preacher was mightily used of God at one time, and he's drunk. Now, how many know the Bible says drunkards will not go to heaven? This is what it says. You can't be a drunkard and go to heaven. And there's many scriptures uh, in the New Testament that says that. So anyways, this preacher's drunk, right? He's backslidden. This man comes in all crippled up, sits down next to this preacher. He turns over and says, hey, what's up, man? And he says, oh, he said, uh, I work for the Highline Company. I knew this guy. He said, I broke my back, and uh, they operated on me, and I've never gotten better. Oh, my Jesus can heal you. My Jesus can heal you. He, he leans over, slaps his drunken hand on this guy. In the name of Jesus. He said the power of God hit him, straightened up his back, his legs. He got up, and he was healed. But he said that God never left the bar, I guess, until the day he died. For in other words, he never... So, well, he must have went to heaven, Pastor Mike, because God heard him. No, 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 that's not what Jesus said. Uh, and there's many scriptures that reveal this to us. 
And so listen to what Jesus said. And Jesus is now ascended to the Father. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. Angels, authorities, and principalities, and powers made, made subject to him. And his word is law. And Jesus said, Matthew twelve fifty, For whosoever should do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my mother, my brother, and my sister. Who is my mother, my brother, my sister? See, because even in that day, they thought every, every Jew was born again. They thought every Jew was going to heaven. Every Jew was a descendant. And see, he had to combat this philosophy among the Jewish people that they were good to go because they were the seed of Abraham. He had to fight this all the time. Matter of fact, one day he, he, he really had to shock him. He said, uh, you say you love me, but you don't. He said, actually, you want to kill me. And they said, what? He said, matter of fact, he said, you're of your father, the devil. They said, what? He said, the works of your father you'll do. He, he was a liar from the beginning. He was a murderer, and he abode not in the truth because he did not love the truth. Well, what do you mean he murdered? Well, he murdered the truth, didn't he? See, when you lie, you're murdering the truth. And then before you know it, they're picking up stones to kill Jesus. But he's trying to wake him up. Remember, the whole gospel is this. Awake thou that sleepest. God's trying to wake us up. To what? Truth. He doesn't want us to live in the darkness. If you walk in the light as he is in the light, the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, will wash away from all sins, right? If you're walking in the light. So we got to walk. What is the light? It's the truth. You'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. So whosoever does the will of my father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother, my mother, and my sister. So if, if I'm actually one of... God's brothers, I'm not his sister and I'm not his mother, I'm going to do the will of the Father. Oh, I didn't say I'm going to be perfect. I'm going to mess up. But I'm going to get back up. I'm going to confess my sins. But I'm going to do the will of the Father. My, my heart is set to the will. For I don't, for words, I don't have this real easygoing attitude of, ah, it don't matter what I do. God loves me no matter what. No, no, no. I'm working out my salvation with fear and trembling. Matthew 7, 21. Listen to this. Now, if, if you don't believe this, I don't know what to do to help you. And I actually, I put these scriptures up on Facebook, and people actually argue with me. But they're not arguing with me. Don't they understand? They're arguing with Jesus. Now, how many of you want to believe the truth? Or do you just want to believe a lie and go off into darkness and find out that, oh, he really did mean what he said. God really did mean what he said. And you'll have an eternity to find out you were wrong. I, I don't want to do that. Um, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. How I many know oh, sinners don't go, Lord, Lord? Or maybe some of them do, but not a lot of them. He says, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And this is the really frightening part, 22. Many will say to me, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in that in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Now, that wasn't just Judas. He said, many, say many. I don't want to be one of those many. And uh, in 1 John, the epistles of John, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, in 1st John, John goes through, through great detail and says, hey, they were with us, but they left us. They were with us, but they left us. They went back into the darkness because God doesn't take away your power of choice. You can choose if you want to give your heart your mind, your emotions to the world, uh, to lust, to, to, to hate, to uh, whatever. You know, you, you, you think about, you, you, yeah, but they were discouraged, dis discouraged, Pastor Mike. Well, I can't help that. King Saul got discouraged in the battlefield and he fell on his own sword and he died. Well, you don't know if Saul went to heaven, Pastor Mike. Well, from all indications, he split hell wide open. He took his own life. And that's another thing people don't want to say. Well, Pastor Mike, if somebody commits suicide, but the Bible says, say the Bible. And I, if I had a loved one, God forbid if someone who's really close to me would ever commit suicide. I'm not putting them in hell. It's not me. You understand, this is not an issue of uh, uh, one guy ran into one, uh, one of the people that comes to church here. He says, yeah, the only people going to heaven in that church is Pastor Mike in the congregation. Well, that's just a lie. I've never taught that. Anybody can make it. But how I many know you got to do it God's way? 
There is a way to go to heaven. You got to do it God's way. And there is no other way. And he says, uh, and in thy name we've cast out devils, and in thy name we've done many wonderful works. And, when, and then will I profess unto them. Jesus is going to say to these people who knew the name of Jesus, like that drunk preacher who moved in the power of God, I never knew you. You are never really intimate with me, because if you were, you would have stayed out of sin. If you got intimate with me, you would understand I hate sin. How many you know why God hates sin? Because of sin, God had to create hell. Because of sin. God didn't want to create hell. Because of sin, God had to become a man. Because of sin, multitudes are there. Because he can't let that sinful nature in heaven. Uh, and it says, and I never knew you. Depart from ye, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You, you're living a life full of selfishness. That's what sin is. It's me, 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 me. Um, you're not concerned about God's will, God's plan, God's purpose. Just what do I want? What do I want to get out of life? What pleasures can I experience? Uh, where can no no that's not the life of a Christian Jesus taught his disciples oh father they said Lord teach us how to pray he said okay here's the foundation oh uh, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven your will in my life Lord not my will isn't that our struggle every day isn't that really our real struggle not my will God let your will be done in you know, back 30, 40 years ago, uh, we would have a midweek service and I'd have a couple hundred people here. And there's a lot of churches now, the only way you get them to come in is by fun and games. It's not because they're getting the word of God. It's because they're, they're, they're being made to feel good and they got lots of wonderful activities. And, uh, but you know what? That isn't going to stand the test of time. When the devil comes, when the flood comes, when the trials come, that, 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 you know, you getting those people to you, the church with a carrot, it, it ain't going to keep them. You know, matter of fact, I, I've been um, I, I, I've been having uh, workers come in, and it's a blessing from the uh, the prison system. And one of the guys said to me this today. He said to me, he said, "Well, Pastor Mike, do you know uh, if you go and buy a cigarette maker, and you go down here and you buy a bunch of tobacco?" He said, "And you and you." And, and you let us make our own cigarettes here, we'll have a bunch of people here for you all the time. I said, well, I'm not going to buy I said, you can buy it, and that's none of my business. You can't smoke in the church. I said, but I'm not buying you tobacco, and I'm not buying you a, 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 a tobacco machine for you're here working for me. Well, we laugh at that, but, but you know, uh, that's what a lot of churches are doing. They may not be giving their congregations tobacco and making cigarettes for them, but they're giving them what their flesh wants. You know, I remember it was kind of strange because uh, the kids would uh, have uh, children from the church over to our house. And those kids, a lot of times, they'd come only once and they would never come back again to eat with us because they found out on our table uh, we didn't have macaroni and cheese and, and we didn't have hot dogs and we had vegetables. And they didn't want vegetables. I mean, I remember one time we took DJ Flickinger out. He must have been about maybe 12 years old. And we took him to an all-you-could-eat food bar. Right? Now get a hold of this. So you got to pay a lot of money for a lot. And you know what? He headed for the all-you-could-eat food bar, and guess what he did? He just filled his plate full of macaroni and cheese. And that's all the kid did. And I said, DJ, I said, I spent all that money for you could, you know, maybe have some green beans and broccoli and cauliflower and maybe this or maybe that. Oh, no, no, no. Macaroni and cheese. And, and so that sounds funny, but that's what's going on in a lot of places. Just give me what I want. I, I don't want to hear all the truth. So Jesus said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Listen, Matthew 520, Jesus said this. For I say unto you that except your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. He said, if your righteousness is not more than the righteousness of the Pharisees, you ain't making it. But you know, well, what was their righteousness? It was this outward show. It wasn't of the heart. 
They didn't care about holiness. They didn't care about obedience. They, they didn't care. They, they were, it was just a really big show. Jesus said they were like whited sepulchres on the outside. They were uh, like uh, whited caskets on the inside. They were full of dead man's bones. And what Jesus is saying, you got to be for real, man. And, and, and listen to this. Jesus said this. He said this, Matthew 25, 35. For I was hungered and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was stra a stranger and you took me in. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw thee hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? Then shall he say uh, also unto them. So, for other words, he, they, they're not keeping track of their good deeds. The righteous people, we, we just love people because God loves us, right? We just do. Good on the people. Now, since I, now, before I got born again, I, I really didn't do anything good except for my buddies. When I got born again, his love came in me, and I found myself helping needy people. It just was automatic. Um, matter of fact, uh, we've always done it. You, you, uh, if you ask Joanna Hurden, she's been to a lot of churches, and I'm breaking on Jesus. She said she doesn't know any church individually that goes so far out of the way to help people. So even parishioners that left here tonight that really maybe did bad or did evil or gossip, if they'd called me up and said, Pastor Mike, I'm really in trouble. Can you help me? Guess what I'm going to say? Yeah, I'll help you. What can I do? No, I don't have no money. But what can I do to help you? And what is that? That's Jesus in us, right? But there's a whole group of people in the church. They don't care about nobody but themselves. They even speak in tongues. Listen, it says... He's going to say to those on his left, because there's ones on the right, there's ones on the left. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you wouldn't give me anything to drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. I was naked, and you clothed me not. I was sick and in prison, and you visited me not. Now, of course, our prison systems in those days, those people, when they were thrown in prison, they didn't feed them. They didn't clothe them. The only ones that could do that was outsiders. When they threw you in debtor's prison, and a lot of the people went into prison in those days, and it used to be in America, if you didn't pay your taxes, they didn't take your house. They took you in. They put you in prison. And when somebody in those days went to prison, it doesn't matter if he was innocent or guilty. They didn't do nothing. You got thrown into prison, and if you had people who had c c concern about you, they would bring you clothes, they would bring you blankets, they would bring you food. Now, today in our system, you know, you get thrown in prison in America, maybe not all the countries of the world, and they take care of you. So you got to really have a proper perspective of all these things. Now, listen to what Jesus said, and, and I don't know how to convince you if you don't believe the Bible. I'm just wasting my time. If you don't believe what Jesus said, I, I can't help it. You know, you have to find out on your own. But listen to what Jesus said uh, to the seventh church in the book of Revelation, chapter 7, the Laodiceans. Listen to what he said. So then, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I'm going to spew thee out of my mouth. The word spew means to vomit, to upchuck, to puke. Jesus said to his people, if, it, 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 because you're, you're, not, you're not out in the world and, and you're not on fire for me. It means you're not passionate about me. You're just kind of like, yeah, hey, cool, man. You know, what's up? And going to go to church this Sunday? I don't know. Don't really need it. You're going to pray? Eh, when I get a chance. You're going to read your Bible? You know, yeah, I, I guess, you know. And you say, that's lukewarm, man. You, you don't pray. You don't read your Bible. You don't want to go to the house of God. Uh, you, you don't care about people going to hell. You don't care about people going to hell. Come on, man, that's lukewarm. I mean, what do you, I mean, Jesus said if you... Jesus said to the church, say the church. Now, please understand, I'm, I'm not really... I'm putting this out tonight, not just for you that are here. I'm speaking this for the Internet. Because we have such a reach. Uh, I can reach so many people now on the internet 
that I could have never reached, even when I used to be on TV uh, seven days a week, and uh, because when you're on TV, you're on and off. That's it. But with the YouTube now, uh, I'm just, I'm there. So when I get done with this message, I'll edit it a little bit, we'll upload it, and I'm going to share it with as many as I can. Why? It's not my words, it's the words of Jesus. And Jesus said, because you're neither hot nor cold, you're lukewarm in your commitment for God. In other words, let me ask you something. When football season comes around, I know some people, they're cold towards football. You know, they don't really care about football. There's other people maybe a little bit lukewarm, but then there's passionate football watchers, right? I mean, then, there, you know, when I was in a, uh, lived up in Wisconsin, I was very passionate as a young, young, young boy for Bart Starr and other famous uh, Packers. And, I mean, you can, these guys are so radical that way up there in Green Bay, it's cold up in Green Bay. I lived in the low, lower part of Wisconsin. Green Bay is cold, and these guys would have on cheese hats, no shirts, and they would take like some kind of black, some ink, and mark up their bodies. And they're out there in the snow and the hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they were passionate. They, you could tell. You could look up in the grandstand and see. Now, first of all, I think just to go to one of those things outside, you got to be a little bit passionate, right? I think so. Because I, I, even though I like football, I, I want, you, if you offered me a free ticket to go to one of those games and to get in the line and to sit in those stands, 40, 50,000 people, I wouldn't do it. But, but I'm telling you what now, uh, they're, they're passionate. You can tell who the passionate ones are. You know, people ought to tell if you're passionate for Jesus. I mean, you should be able to see it. How's that? I'm not saying you got to wear a goofy hat and you got to put bumper stickers on your car and you got to wear lapel pins, you know. But, but we're not ashamed of them. We're looking for opportunities, right? We're saying, oh, and it's not based on our goodness or our, our righteousness. So I'm just saying that he says, because you're not a cold or hot, I'm going to vomit you out. Um, uh, see, mo most... The, the shocking truth is, is, is that there's many who profess to know Christ and when they die, they're not going to make it. Many, 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 many will say, Pentecostals. We're not talking about fundamentalists. I'm not saying you've got to be baptized in the Holy Ghost to make it heaven. But many, many, even Pentecostals will say, Lord, we cast out devils and we did many for the works. And he'll say, I don't know you, you never... You never, loved, never, you never loved what I loved. You never wanted what I wanted. And you got, you, listen, I, you, they used to say a dime a dozen, but I think actually a hundred, a, 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 a hundred for a dime of preachers that will absolutely tickle your ears and make you like, feel like you're okay, even though you're lukewarm. And, and I love you, so I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to let people think they're going to go to heaven living a lukewarm Christian life. I'm just not going to do it. I'm going to stand before God. I'm fighting for my own soul in this wicked, adulterous, deceiving time. And it is a time of great deception. So I don't know how much further we're going to get, but I know this in my, last, in my 40, over 40 years of ministering the word, I am running into more and more deceived people all the time. Well, how do you know they're deceived? They won't believe what Jesus said. They won't believe the Bible. They won't believe what God said. They won't acknowledge that Jesus gave his life not to let us stay in the condition we're in, but to make us like him. That's why Jesus died. He didn't die just to get us to heaven. It wasn't like a one-way ticket to heaven. No, he put his divine nature in us. He said that we might become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So Jesus died to change Mike Yeager, that I would become a new creature. And people go, well, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And they, that's just a confession. No, that is a true statement. If I'm in Christ, I'm walking, talking, thinking, speaking like a new creature. I'm not, I'm not the man I used to be. I don't do the drugs, the alcohol, the cussing, the swearing, the beating up of people, the lying, the manipulating, the stripping of cars, the alcohol, the pornography. I don't do, I don't do the stuff I used to do anymore. 
I'm a new creature in Christ. And the more I go deeper in Christ, the more I'm going to be like Christ. And the more fruit I'm going to have. And the Bible says there is a level of fruit production. And that's why the Bible says if you, are, if you have fruit in your life, in 30, 60, 100 fold, if you have some fruit in your life, uh, uh, God the Father is going to have his son Jesus and the Holy Spirit, and they're going to come and they're going to prune. You know, they're going to cut off the dead branches. They're say. Okay, we want some more joy. We want some more. So a little bit of love ain't enough. We want more love. We want more joy. We want more peace. We want more power. We want more patience. More patience. More endurance. More kindness. See, as I get older, I should get more and more kind. I should become more and more gentle. I should become more and more. One of the fruits of the Spirit is faithful. I should be more faithful. I should be more reliable. I should be no more dependable. How many know you can, you can believe, you can know that Pastor Mike, no matter how he feels, is going to preach. I mean, I stood in this pulpit last, and praise God, I got 95% of my healings manifested. But last Sunday, man, I tell you what, I was going through passing uh, 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 kidney stones. Oh, I was, man, you don't know how sick I was. But you know what? As I was preaching up here, all the symptoms disappeared. Now, I could have easily said, well, you know, God will understand. Uh, I've got kidney stones, and he wouldn't expect me to preach when I'm feeling so rough. My back is hurting so bad I can hardly stand it and, and, and I don't want to talk about the rest of it. No, but I'm faithful. You know what it is? It's Jesus in me. It's Jesus in me. Have I always been faithful? Not probably the way I should be, but aren't you glad you can repent? So, Lord, I messed it then, but I'm not going to miss it now. And that's the good news. Is it's not like God just cuts you off. It, it says he'll continue. Now, unto him, he, he'll continue to work in us. And if there's a little bit of fruit, how about the, the, the fig tree? The owner of the, uh, of the vineyard comes along, and it's a fig tree. It's a fig tree. If we're not denying it's not a fig tree, so you're a born-again believer. And God comes along, and he sees a bunch of green leaves, and he says, you know what? I want some fruit from this tree, he says to the caretaker. And that's actually symbolic of Jesus and the Father. He says, uh, and Jesus stands up. He intercedes. He says, it's been three years. I've come three years. Now I want some fruit in the life of this tree. For we could say they were born again three years. And uh, so uh, Jesus says, give me one more year. Just give me another year. I'm going to work with another year. I'm going to prune it. I'm going to speak to it. I'm going to try to give it what it's need. How many you know you need the word? And you need the spirit, whether you know it or not. And he said, but if you come back in the fourth year and there's no fruit, this is frightening. Go ahead and cut it down. And what do they do with the tree? When they cut it down. In our orchards, when they root a tree up, what do they do? You throw it in the fire. So this is real stuff. People have turned the gospel into this real light, flaky, oh, I'm so wonderful. I'm a child of God. I'm more than a conqueror. No matter what I do, Jesus loves me. That's not what the Bible says. God wants fruit. God wants fruit. And if he don't get fruit, you have no place in his kingdom. I mean, that's, that's, and it's not me saying this. Now, this is, we'll go into the new covenant and just see what Paul said, 1 Corinthians 6, 8. Nay, you do, and he's talking to the Corinthian church who's in trouble now. They're really in trouble. He's telling them, you're about ready. He's telling the Christians, you're about ready to end up in hell. And listen to what he says. Nay, you do wrong. And there's a lot of scriptures before this, but I don't have time to get into them. And defraud, and that even your brethren. He said, you're, you're ripping off your brother in Christ. He, and the previous scriptures talked about how they're treating each other. How they're not sharing their food. Uh, the one guy was sleeping with his, his father's mother. Yes. And, and, and so his father's wife, not his father's mother, his father's wife. So listen to this. He says, know you not. Gee, and this is what Paul said. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Friends, if you're involved in unrighteous deeds, you're not going to get it. He's telling the churches. He ain't telling them, well, you know, it really grieves the heart of God that you guys are uh, lying to one another and you're stealing and you're sleeping with each other's wives and that really grieves the heart of God. You need to stop it. No, he says, you guys, if you're doing this, you're not going to heaven, man. 
So I told you last week there was a well-known preacher. I knew about him in Baltimore. I didn't know what happened to him. He was there one day, had a big church. Next thing he's gone. And Brother Stu was telling me, who's down in Arizona, who uh, left that church. He was the guy's youth pastor or children's pastor. And uh, about maybe a month before things got exposed, he didn't know what was going on. He left the church and he went down the road and started his own church, but not from the congregation. He went down and I can't remember where. He said, next thing he knows, the church is completely gone because it came out that the head pastor and his associate or associates were swapping wives. Now we're talking about born again spirit food. Well, Pastor Mike, no, let me tell you something. If I, God forbid, if I sleep with someone's wife and I don't repent, I'm going to hell. If I'm, if I'm committing adultery, I'm going to hell. I don't care if I speak in tongues. If I'm a liar, if I'm a thief, if I'm a backstabber, if I'm a gossiper and I'm trying to destroy you, you, you think God's going to let me into heaven? That's insane. That's absolutely insane. And there's many scriptures that verify. But listen, it says, be not deceived. He says, know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You're doing things that are completely against God's nature. Be not deceived. Say, be not deceived. He says, neither fornicators nor idolaters. That means anybody who loves anything more than God. He said, people who love things more than they love God, they're not going to inherit eternal life. I know you hear about God loving us, but we'll probably stop here tonight. I mean, I got scripture after scripture and after this. I mean, it's powerful stuff. And it says, be not deceived. Don't let nobody lie to you. Neither fornicators, not someone who's not married having sex outside of marriage. There's a lot of that going on. You know, people who give themselves to pornography and don't repent and stop it, they're going to hell. I'm, I'm going to say again. People who give themselves pornography and who don't repent of it, they're going to hell. They're fornicators. Okay? Neither fornicators nor idolaters, people who love anything more than God, nor adulterers, that means you're having a sexual relationship with someone that's not your wife, nor infeminate, you know who the infeminate are? It's gay, homosexuals. They will not inherit eternal life, and, and they, they will absolutely crucify you. There are people that turn people in who say this kind of stuff on YouTube, and they take them off YouTube. Uh, they take them off Facebook. And, and I know I stand the danger of losing my social media stand. I'm not attacking them. I'm just saying what the Bible said. The Bible says the infeminate. But I remember one time I had a young man. Uh, I could tell he had that spirit on him. And his boyfriend's father was getting out of prison. And I went to these guys. I'm, I'm not, you know, as long as they bo don't bother anybody. Uh, I just was running to a, a young lady, well, not young. She was a lesbian. I didn't attack her. I didn't condemn her. She needs to get saved. And uh, he, uh, he was looking for a place for his, his boyfriend's father. And I said, yeah, we can help him. He said, well, I know you're a preacher. I said, yeah. He said, am I going to go to hell because of what I do? I said, well, let me ask you something. <clears throat> I said, um, if I said the adulterer, who didn't repent was going to hell. What do you think about that? Oh, if I said the thief, a guy who's stealing, he's going to go to hell. What would you say about that? If I said a murderer, okay. I said, you're just in one of those categories. I told him. He didn't get mad at me. I said, you're just, I said, it's not like God is picking on you. It's just, God says, this ain't right. Don't do it. But of course, the guy's got to get born again. I mean, you got to get born again to even get victory over this stuff. God isn't expecting us to get victory over alcohol. God doesn't say, well, get rid of the alcohol and then you can get saved. No, God says, come as you are. I agree with this. Come as you are and I'm going to give you the power to overcome. That's what salvation is. It's the power to overcome. And it says, in the last days, they're going to declare they're of God and they're going to have a form of godliness, but no power. It says, uh, they profess they know God, but in their works, they deny him. And uh, these guys out here I work with every day, they can tell there's something different about me. I don't cuss. I don't swear. I don't backstab. I'm trying to do good by them. The girls are cooking for them every day, you know. And, uh, 
you know, I won't buy them cigarettes. They have to buy their own. But still, I'm going to do good by them. Tomorrow, I'm going to go down and buy a deep pan pizza for them. And uh, just a blessing for them being with me this week. But that, that's because I need to do, I'm not trying to bribe them. <laughs> well, maybe a little bit. <laughs> but I'm just, I still want to bless them because they've been good to us, right? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. And we'll look at another translation at another time. Nor thieves, nor covetous. That's the one thing we never warn anybody about, being covetous. What do you mean being covetous? It means the stuff has you, and you don't have it. Now, you can, you can be covetous with just a little. Uh... It means you got to have stuff. Well, it's not just wanting somebody's house. It's it, it, you gotta you gotta have more and more and more. And our society is full of it. That's what the credit card's all about. They don't even care. They can pay back their bills. They're just going to get all they can get, and they're going to take all the stuff. Well, you see this on TV when these guys lure it. When they just use that as an example. Oh, it's whites against blacks, blacks against whites, and they'll go into Baltimore and they'll rampage. And what's the first thing they do? They're busting out the windows of these big shops and they're carrying away the LED TVs and the computers. It was never about. It was all covetous, man. Covetousness. Okay. Nor drunkards. And that means also druggies. Nor revilers. Nor extortioners, people who extortion, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And there's many, many, uh, matter of fact, and we didn't have time tonight, night, but chapter, basically, Romans chapter 1 and 2 is talking to the church in Rome. And he says, listen, if you're attacking the wicked because they do this, 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 you're attacking the wicked, but because you're washed in the blood, he said, but don't you realize, if you do, and you can read Romans 1 and 2, he said, if you're doing the same thing they're doing, he said, you're going to get the same judgment. See, I don't know why. People think that the blood of Jesus has made us uh, uh, exempt from punishment. Now, we're exempt from the punishment of that which we had committed, which we repented of. But it doesn't give us a license to sin. It actually, salvation requires you. Now, now you have no excuse. Before I got born again, and my excuse wouldn't have worked with God, I had an excuse for the drugs, the alcohol, the pornography, the lying, the cussing, the stealing, the stripping of cars, the violence, the hate, the bitterness. But now that I'm born again, see, before I got born again, if I would have slapped you alongside the head, I, 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 I would have had a good excuse. But not now I don't. Now, I have no excuse as a child of God to do evil. Matter of fact, the Bible says, do good to them that do you evil. Bless and curse not. And, and the Bible even says this. If you don't forgive, you don't forgive, I won't forgive you. So we forgive. So, Father, I thank you that just part one of this teaching that not all confessing believers are going to make it to heaven, but they'll end up, end up in hell. I pray that you would quicken it to the heart and the fear of God would come and we'd begin to look to you to live right in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen.